Hi everyone, it's Terry from the Gypsy Magpie and I'm here today for the Graphics Fairy Tag Team with um, my first tag. This one was a lot of fun for me to put together. It had a sewing theme and it was made mostly from things that I already had at home. Um, all I had to do was print the images out. The process was, was pretty easy and I'll show you step by step how we made it. This um, up here at the top, I've got a little bit of a tape measure tied onto the top. It's super stiff, but I really liked the look of a real tape measure. Um, we've got a vintage sewing advertisement as the background. She's got some beautiful dress form images in that, um, in that bundle. I added a couple butterflies for color, a little canvas embellishment, and this really cool tin button. Um, it's called a flat back. So I'll go over the details a little bit more as we use the pieces, but this is what we're gonna make. The back has a little bit of book print on it just so that it's finished front and back. But let me get started. So I'm gonna set this aside and I'm gonna show you just the basic supplies. They are super, super basic. I needed a liquid adhesive. This is my favorite. I use it for everything. Um, I used Distress Ink and an applicator. You can use foam tape or chipboard and I'll explain the differences uh, a, a little bit farther along. I'm using a collage medium and a paintbrush. This acts as your uh, adhesive to adhere the paper to the tag. I've got an emery board here. You can use a sanding block if you've got one. These are small. They fit in my travel bag, so I love to use these. And besides, it's got sparkly pink rhinestones on it. I've got an X-Acto knife, and I've got some different pairs of scissors. Really, those are all the tools you need. Like I said, super, super basic. It's stuff that everybody's got. The tag was actually made, let me get the sample back here. The tag is actually made out of a purchase tag. Um, you can buy these in packs in the craft stores. They're a nice weight. They're made out of a really thick chipboard. If you can't find these, you certainly don't need to buy them. You can make them. Um, I'm not going to give real specific dimensions for things because you may need to size them depending on what you've got access to. But uh, these seem to be pretty standard. They have them at Joann's and Michael's and I think Hobby Lobby's got them. Everybody's got them under their own store brand. So um, again, if you couldn't find them, it's literally a rectangle. It's got some rounded off corners. You don't have to do that if you needed to do it yourself, but there are a lot of tools out there if you've already got them, like book binding tools. There are a lot of corner chompers. You can round your corners. These are just snipped off at a diagonal and you've got a hole punched in the center. So super, super basic. A shipping tag would also work. Those are just the thin manila tags that you buy at, at a stationery store. Um, the images we're gonna use are the vintage sewing machine advertisement. The colors on this are beautiful. That's really kind of what got the whole theme going. Again, there's the dress form. I printed the dress form at four by six because that is what happened to fit onto my tag. The advertisement, I printed it five by seven. Again, because that's what fit onto my tag. I used a little bit of on my sample, I used a book print, the one we're gonna put together uh, live. We're gonna go ahead and use sheet music. You don't have to cover the back of the tag. I just like for my projects to be completely finished on all sides. You could use a pretty printed scrap of paper. You could also print off another image from the bundle and glue that to the back. So I'm gonna get started with the tag and the collage medium. I hear people quite often say that collage medium is the same as Mod Podge. It's actually not quite the same. They do the same thing. They work as a liquid adhesive, but if you can find collage medium, I would suggest using that over the Mod Podge because collage medium leaves no texture. 
Uh, it leaves no sheen. I'm using a matte, so it leaves no shine to it, and there are no brush strokes that show. So I really, really like that. And you can find this at any craft store or online. So all I'm going to do, I am I'm going to work quickly here. Um, I'm brushing the collage medium onto onto the substrate surface of the tag. I'm doing that rather than onto the printed image because the printed image itself is a little oversized and I don't need to brush a bunch of matte medium on where it's not gonna stick to anything. So let me balance that there. I am gonna stick this down. And what, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move this away. I'm gonna hold it up to the light in my room so that I can see where this is centered on here. I wanna make sure that I, well, actually, yeah, let me hold it up to the light. Okay, what I wanted to do is make sure that I got the entire toe of the boot and that this was pretty even. So all you do, you wanna get good adherence. Um, if you have a brayer, it's a really good time to use one. Matte medium may make you feel like your project bows a little bit. That's only because it's wet at the moment. Once it dries, it completely flattens out. Again, you use it almost like a wallpaper paste. You want to have a solid coat of medium on, but you don't need big, thick blobs. On mine, again, I like the front and the back covered. So I would go ahead, wait till this dried, go ahead and cut it out, and then I would cover the back. I've got one that's already done up to that point, so I'm gonna set this aside and grab the other one I've got. So this one is dry, completely dry, and I've gone ahead and done the back. I actually did the book print first so that I was able to cut the edges off. I wanna show you how I do that. Um, anytime I'm gluing onto chipboard, you can sand off excess, which I will do in a moment, but to get a nice tight cut against your, your chipboard, if you let your scissor blade kind of rest, I don't know if you can hear it. You can hear when it hits that chipboard. I'm gonna let that scissor blade uh, rest right against it and I'm gonna just follow that and it completely cuts it along the edge. I have no, no excess paper hanging over. I like that. Um, you can get away without sanding if you can get it cut nice and tight like that. The reason I like to sand is you get a little bit of, I'm gonna cap this up while it's wet. You get a little bit of open pore um, on the, 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 I can't think of the word I want to use. The paper has fibers in it. So if you can sand it just a little bit along the edge, it kind of opens up those fibers and you get a really nice soft edge and it takes the distressing very, very nicely. Um, one thing I did not grab my tool to show you and I had wanted to, um, if you have a rat tail file, that will help open up where the hole is at the top. If you don't have a rat tail file, take your pointiest scissors that have a small tip, you can poke them through and you can turn it. If you have a rat tail file, which you can buy in any hardware store, um, I happen to have one from an old paper tool set, paper working tool set, and it's like 20 years old. Still works great. That will give you a super, super clean um, hole right there at the top. This one's gonna be a little bit messy because I don't have that file. I don't have that file handy. So that's really how you cover the front and the back. Um, again, I like a little bit of distress ink. I don't, I don't um, distress real, real heavy. I just kind of lightly go along the edges. All I'm trying to do is just slightly antique those edges. If you like a heavier a heavier antiquing, all you do is use a darker color and put it on a little bit heavier. But that's what I would do. I would go around the edges. 
Um, if you like some additional detail, I'm gonna do this quickly, you can always take a Sharpie pen or some type of a, I like to use a waterproof pen, but a real fine tipped Sharpie. You can make yourself some line work right around the top and along the sides. And this is not intended to be perfect. It's quick. All it does is add one extra little bit of it's not even a texture that you can feel, but it's a texture that you can see. And again, imperfection actually is better. Um, this one, I think you can see. There's just, it's just a very, very faint line. And that's all it is. You certainly don't need to put it on, but it's kind of a fun thing to do just to, to add a little bit more. So we've got the front and the back done. I added a little tiny, what I would call a hole reinforcement on the back, and I had to make it myself because this isn't a standard side size tag. So I used a three quarter inch hole punch, circle punch, and I cut that out. Let me see if I can get that on a background. So it's a three quarter inch circle, and I just used my regular hole punch to punch the center hole. And I glued that onto the back. Again, I like a liquid adhesive. If you have a favorite adhesive, just use that one. Um, the Beacon is great stuff because if you get any excess, it's really easy to get off. It never takes the finish off your paper. It doesn't ruin photos. All you do is it's kind of like a rubber cement. You can rub it with your fingers and it kind of balls up and you can, you can remove it that way. Or you can use one of these. I think it's called an art gum eraser. And you can just buy them in the um, the craft store back where the art supplies are. They're like two bucks. This thing will last you for 10 years. It's great. You just, you kind of run it along the, in, uh, the edge of wherever you've got excess adhesive. And it just picks it right up and pulls it off. So the way I did the mannequins, these are super sturdy. Um, I knew that I wanted to raise them up a little bit, give them some dimension. So I've got some chipboard under here. And I'll show you how I do that. I do this, I use this technique on almost everything I make because I like dimension. So when I do a collage that's got dimension, I've always got some chipboard in there. I do a lot of banners. Um, those also have chipboard in them. So what you do, you take your, you take your printed image, and this one I've already cut out, but I would suggest if you're gonna do this chipboard technique, I would suggest not cutting it out yet. You don't need to go to that extra work. Um, so this, this is the image we're gonna use. But I've taken, you can buy different weights of chipboard. This is super thin. This is, this is probably thinner than like a cereal box, but they do sell it at the store. Um, a lot of times you'll have something um, in, in packaging for something. Keep the little pieces, they work great. It's super thin. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue that mannequin image onto it. So this is what you end up with. I've got the image on the front. I used the collage medium to do that. I just glued it onto the chipboard and it's had a chance to totally dry. I, I glued it last night so that it would be nice and dry. It works best if you can have a little bit of patience and give yourself enough time for it to dry, at least an hour or so. Um, what I would do now is I would take some sharp scissors and I would go ahead and cut the image out. It, it cuts, it's a little bit harder to cut than paper, but there are scissors out there on the market that are made specifically for cutting through thicker things. Um, these tonic, they're made by Tonic. Uh, these are, have the Tim Holtz brand on them. They'll cut through the chipboard with ease. Don't use your really good sharp paper scissors because the chipboard will eventually dull those blades. Get, give yourself a little bit of time. If you like the look of the, the cutaway areas, take an X-Acto knife and again, you can cut through chipboard with an X-Acto knife. It takes a couple passes. So don't think that you're gonna be able to just quickly cut those out. You're gonna to have to make two or three passes 
to get a clean cut to remove that excess paper. But you know, it, it's so worth it. They're beautiful. This is how it looks without, which is still, it's a beautiful graphic. But if you can take the time to cut away, I love the look with the cutaway. And I didn't cut out every single piece. I didn't feel it was necessary. I cut out just enough so that it gave it a little bit of airiness. Once I was done with that, I took a thicker grade of chipboard. And I would say this is probably twice as thick as the other one. If you can't find the thicker chipboard, all you have to do is layer the thin ones together with a little bit of, of glue. I went ahead and I cut it into small squares and I glued it onto the back. If you didn't want to take the time to do this, which I have to tell you, it's super quick. It makes your project super sturdy, but you could definitely get away with using foam tape. Foam tape works. It's super sticky. The foam tape they sell nowadays is really good. It doesn't, uh, your projects don't come apart. So by all means, if you don't want to go the chipboard route, you can use foam tape but use something to give yourself a little bit of dimension. It makes the project so much prettier. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use the same liquid adhesive. I use it on everything. Um, I'm gonna put it on all of this chipboard, only on the areas that have this raised up portion because that's the only thing that's actually gonna stick to my tag. No sense on putting it where you don't need it. So let me set that down. And to place it, I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it. I'm gonna stick it there. I want a little bit of it to hang off the edge of the tag. And that's just about where I want it. The three in one, it'll grab and hold pretty quickly. So I'm just making sure I get some good adhesion here. But I'm hoping you can see the the dimension. If I can turn this in person, it's really easy to see. Maybe on camera, not so much, but I love the look you get when you've got a little bit of space between the images. That little bit of space really adds a lot to the project. So we're part of the way there. We've got, we've got the main image on there. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to decorate it a little bit, kind of like gild the lily. So I had some, I just went through stuff that I already had. Embellishing is kind of like that. Just go through what you've got. Um, I had a package of their little canvas tags and these were probably a buck. They were, they were in a dollar bin somewhere and I've had them for years and I've used a few of them here and there, but I loved them on this since this was all about sewing. I liked the fact that there was some real fabric. So all I did, um, this one was a butterfly. This one's a number. I kind of frayed the edge a little bit and I glued a little bit of chipboard onto the back. And again, it's gonna add a little bit of sturdiness and a little bit of dimension. So what I'm gonna do, put some adhesive on. This was just kind of tucked underneath. And again, I have the very edge of it just kind of hanging off of the tag. So I like it when everything isn't contained onto a tag. So I like that a little bit sticking over, We've got a little bit sticking over here, and this is getting really solid. This one's getting really hard to move. In about maybe five minutes max, this will be, you won't be able to move it at all. Um, one of the beauties of the liquid adhesive, especially since there is a way to remove any adhesive that shows, if you put something down and you take another look and you wish that you'd moved it a little bit, go ahead and move it. Until this is holding firm, you it's it's uh, it gives you a lot of flexibility. So go ahead and move it, make sure it's exactly where you want. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add this element right here. These are called flat backs. Um, a lot of companies have sold them over the last, oh gosh, I've been buying them for about 10 years. These happen to be Tim Holtz, and I think they're an old set. They're not even new. I, I loved that this one was yellow and orange. It seemed to go really good with the color theme. I've got another orange one in the set. 
but I thought everybody might not have these or might not have access. So what about some buttons, some regular buttons? Um, here's a wood button that's got some flowers and I like it and I actually like it a lot. I like the color, but then again, I like this one. Um, this one was very plain, so I ran some just embroidery floss through it so it had some thread. I, I like the look of that. If that looks messy to you, leave it off. So I'm kind of torn between the two. I think since this one I've already put the thread in, I'm going to go ahead and use that. I'm just going to glue it on again with this same adhesive. I love this stuff. It works on everything. So got a little bit on there. I'm going to stick that right down on the center of the mannequin. And I'm going to top this off with some butterflies. These butterflies I printed out of one of the butterfly bundles and I print tons of these. Um, I love every butterfly that she's got. So I print them as contact sheets, which in my printer, that means it prints out of the thumbnail size. If you have the ability to change the size of your prints on your printer, which I think every single printer allows you to do that, you just need to know how your printer program works in your laptop. But again, these are contact size for me and they are the size of a thumbnail. So on a standard eight and a half by 11 sheet, I get 35 of these. And believe it or not, I go through them so fast. Um, I use them on everything. They're tiny, they're, they're perfect accents. What I did with these, I cut them out and I glued a tiny little bit of chipboard onto the back because again, I want that dimension. It also allows me to bend it a little bit, bend those wings, so you get a little bit of, I don't know if you can see that, a little bit of dimension. So I'm gonna put a tiny bit of adhesive on there. And I'm just gonna glue that to the top of the button. And in a couple minutes, that will be set and get a little bit of adhesive on this one. This one's going to go on to the dress form itself. So basically, my tag is done. All that's left is to put something through the top. On this one, I had an old tape measure. Um, I think I got it at like a thrift store. It was broken and it, it no longer pulled out of the little tin case that it was in. I didn't care. I didn't want the case. I really just wanted the the tape measure ribbon. Um, again, it's, it's very plasticky. It wasn't easy to get through here, but I was able to do it. Had to play around with it a little bit. But if you didn't have a tape measure, or even better yet, if you had an old cloth one, that would be awesome. Um, you can use any kind of trim. I've got I've got some grosgrain ribbon here. The color's really pretty and that would work. But I think what I'm gonna put into this one is this trim. I like the color. Um, I like how it looks. So I am just gonna kind of eyeball this. I'm gonna cut off a piece that's, I don't know, maybe eight inches. That's probably eight to 10 inches long. I'm gonna fold it in half. All I'm gonna do is push it through the top and you don't have to put anything through the top hole. It just, I like the way it looks. And it's thick, it's not wanting to go through, so I'm gonna push it through with my scissors. And I'm gonna make a little loop in the back. Somebody told me one time this was called a, a lark, lark head or lark's head knot. I don't know if that's true, but this always works on a tag. You make the loop, you take the ends and you pull them through and you just kind of wiggle it till it gets all the way to the top. And there you go. If they were too long, you could cut them a little bit shorter. Um, for me, I like this look better than a bow, but if you like a bow, tie a bow. So this is, these are starting to dry. All I'm doing is bending these wings a little bit more so they've got some dimension. And there you go. We've got two tags here. Let me move this out of the way. They're following the same formula. They're slightly different from one another, and that's okay. Again, you use what you've got, and I hope you enjoy this project. I hope you give it a try. 
I think I'm definitely gonna make a couple more of these. I, I really, really love these. So thank you for stopping by and playing today. And I hope you go off and make something great today. Bye-bye.